In this video, I want to show you how you can create a dynamic tooltip for your visuals in your Power BI reports. I'm going to show you how you can create a tooltip page that is fully customizable for your own needs. And we're also going to look at how you can use field parameters to let your users control the context of what's being shown on your tooltips. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. Tooltips in Power BI, or at least the default one that Power BI provides you, is a pretty basic tooltip. It provides you with sort of additional context on the data points that you hover over on your page. Today, I want to show you how you can create a dynamic tooltip in Power BI so that you can express more information within these uh, tooltips themselves. So here I've already created a simple bar chart, which is just showing the total sales for a fictional company called Northwind. So it's the monthly sales that they have, which if you hover over will give you the total sales for that specific month to briefly talk you through the data set itself. So the data set is based on the Northwind data set, which is a fictional company that sells goods internationally. So within this data model, we have information about different orders, different orders, how much they cost and how many were ordered, when the orders were made, what products were ordered and the categories of those products, as well as some information about the customers themselves. Along with that, I've also pre-created a calendar table, which we will use or we are using for our time intelligence calculations, which at the moment is just being used as the axis here for our bar chart. One last thing that I created to make our lives easier is a total sales measure, which simply calculates the total sales for uh, the orders by multiplying the unit price against the quantity. So as you saw already on a bar chart like this, for example, when you hover over any of the data point elements within the bar chart themselves, it gives you some details about that bar chart data points, either the axis, so the month and the total sales, and that context changes depending on where you hover. Now, there are many ways that you can customize tooltips, uh, but today we're going to look at how you can use a tooltip page to add some more dynamic elements. So a good example would be, let's say when we hover over an element here, we want to show the products ranked by category of total sales when we hover over a specific month and we want to show that in a tooltip. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new page here and I'm going to just call this uh, tooltip sales. And while keeping this page empty, we can go to format your page under canvas settings or page information. We can change this and say, allow use as a tooltip. Now that automatically converts our canvas into a tooltip page, which is a, a smaller version of a page. And it's not meant to be used as a page, but more of a tooltip. You'll see under canvas settings, it's changed the type, which is a tooltip type and this is the recommended uh, dimensions. However, if you want to change that, you can change it uh, by changing here to custom. We'll leave it to a tooltip for now. And uh, let's say, let's just add some details that we want to add in this tooltip page, which will be shown when we hover over our bar chart. So we want to show a couple of things. So we want to show the total sales as well as the ranking by the product category sales. So let's start by adding some visuals here. So total sales. So now that our tooltip page is done and we've pretty much customized it however we like, we can now go back to our original visual here where we have the total sales by month. So once you select the visual, let's go to format your visual. And then under general, you'll find a tooltip option here. And the tooltip option here will be defaulted to a report page or a default, it probably would be here, but you would need to change it into a report page. 
and then the page will need to be the tooltip sales. So what will happen is that it will use the tooltip page that we have created as a tooltip when you hover over the visual element itself. Let's say, let's hover over here. So you'll see that as I hover over different data points, the data within the page or the tooltip sales page itself also changes its context. So you'll see that here we're seeing March 1998 sales by category. And then you will have here February, etc., etc. So pretty handy, right? So this is what we call a dynamic tooltip, and it's a great option if you want to give extra details to your users without clogging up your page too much. Let's take this dynamic tooltip to the next level, though. Let's say we want to give our users the ability to switch access within the tooltip themselves. So, for example, here when you look at this tooltip, we have our total sales ranked and grouped by product category. However, let's say our users want to have the ability to switch and see the countries that have the most sales ranked by country instead of category. How would we do that? In these cases, we'll have to utilize field parameters, which is something that I covered in the past, but not in a tooltip context. If you want to know more about the field parameters in greater detail, I covered it in much more detail in a separate video. So go check that one out if you haven't yet. So anyway, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the parameter. So under here, new parameter and fields. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a slicer that allows us to switch between our different dimensions. So we're going to keep it as fields. The name of this would be a tooltip context. You can name it whatever you like. We'll just add the two dimensions that we want to switch in between. So we have the categories, which is the, uh, the categories for the products. And then you have from the, well, not really, from the customer's country. Let's rename this to just make it a little bit easier to know what they are. So product category and customer country. We'll leave add slicer to this page ticked. So when we hit create from here. What it will do is it will create a DAX table here, which will have the tooltip context uh, field that we have created, the field parameter. And it's also created a slicer for us automatically in the page. So what will happen if we change and select a different context here is nothing because we haven't really linked it yet to, um, to our tooltip. So what we can do is go back to the tooltip itself. Under the values here, our ranking, instead of using category name, we'll use the tooltip context as our, uh, our y-axis. So now when you select a value, let's say a customer country, that should in theory also change when you hover over your element in, in our bar chart. So let's keep it to product category for now. And if you hover over, you'll see it will still give us total sales by category. If we change it to customer country now, there you go. You see that the actual visual itself also changes the ranking based on the country now, as opposed to product category. So it lets your users switch the context of your tooltips using a slicer in your page. However, one thing that you'll notice is that although the field parameter is dynamic, the ranking is dynamic, some elements in this tooltip page are not dynamic, like for example, the titles, which you can make dynamic, but we'll not cover this in this current video. I'll cover it in, a, in the next one because this one is a pretty interesting topic by itself. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to create dynamic tooltips for your visuals in your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. 
Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.